from Hagee Ministries Television Studios. Today on The Difference, we welcome internationally known psychologist, humorist, and award-winning New York best-selling author, Dr. Kevin Lehman. The smartest thing I did is I pulled off the road. I just put my hand on my wife's thigh, and I just prayed. I just said, God, why don't you bless our marriage? Women are like crop pots, men are like microwaves. The men fire up pretty easy. Women, Takes they need all these. Yeah. They have hills and valleys and levels to get through, and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. I mean. How would you like to create the marriage you deserve? It's possible. All you have to do is make a decision to be the individual that your spouse needs. Today we're talking with Kevin Lehman as he shares how couples can express joy and excitement in the marriage relationship and so much more. You don't want to miss today's program with this great guest. Welcome to The Difference. Kevin Lehman is one of our favorite guests, and you don't want to miss one moment of this program. Let's take a look at some of the things he had to share on his last visit. Kids and husbands have a lot in common. Husbands hate their wives' question. I've said for years, I'm quoting myself, hey, honey, just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. I mean, it's tough enough to be married because women are weird. Uh, they hug anything that moves. Uh, they go potty in groups of 8, 10, and 12. I'm going potty. Anyone want to come along? That's a social event. Hey, Matt, come on. You want to go with the gentleman? Come on, you and me. It's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> now, Dr. Kevin, we've talked about kids and we've talked about parenting. Today we're talking about what you describe as the best, best book you've book. ever written. It's a play on words, sheet music. And it has to do with the intimacy in the marriage relationship. Making music in la cama, in the bed. <laughs> you know, uh, creating a symphony, anything you want to call it. You know, we have to start with this, that in the church, we've done a miserable job of talking about marriage. You know, it's uh, covenant, it's uh, communication, it's commitment, the three C's. It's, and, and it all sounds like a chore. Chore. Yeah, and it shouldn't it's because... It, but you have to understand that it is a covenant. It's an agreement that the two of us come together with God for One. good forever. I'm not telling you that's what happened in the world today. It's not. Everything but. Correct. But that's the goal. And what I would challenge people with to start with is if you look at the scripture, it says, and they were naked. I would challenge couples to get naked. Okay. Number one. It says they were naked and unashamed. Unashamed. And that's the most important part of that scripture. They are unashamed. You teach people shame. Yeah. You know, as a young dad, you change diapers. Absolutely. You know, uh, and you know, you're changing a one year old or 18 month old. Did ever, ever any of them want to say, oh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. No, you have to teach kids shame. But we have so many couples within the church who grew up shamed. And they're afraid to tell you, pastor, what they've done in their life. They tell themselves, I could never tell my pastor what I did out of fear of what my pastor would think of me. I could never tell my wife or my husband what I did. My challenge is if you want to become one in marriage, and it is a challenge to become one in marriage, you better become transparent. There are so many things that happen in the world that we live in that remove the safety from from the marriage relationship. You know, there's uh, no contest divorce. There's, you know, I individuals that literally go into a relationship thinking about how they're going to get out of the relationship. Right. What, what are the most important things for an individual who isn't married thinking, you know, this is a path forward. Wh what do they need to be doing? You ask good questions. Because when the, you walk down the flower strewn aisle, folks, and here's my question. How many people just got married? And somebody says, uh, how about two? Well, you're close. You're only four off. At least six people got married. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, you marry your in-laws. Yeah. That's a stopper for some people. Now, if there's a blessing in those in-laws, that's a blessing in your marriage. Unfortunately, we have so much dysfunction today in our society. And if your parents were divorced, 
Mm -hmm. Okay, now you have at least 10 people who are being married. Mm -hmm. And you're either going to reap the benefit of the good teaching, okay? If you're marrying a woman and she had a great relationship with her dad, that's an A+. Plus. That's five stars. If she had a negative relationship, you pay for it, Matt. Yeah, you're going to have to work it out. I was 23 and my bride was 21 when we walked down that aisle. We had a big wedding, by the way. We spent $29 on flowers. Wow. For the entire thing, we had a reception was at Aunt Evie's house. We had ham and cheese sandwiches, and we had mints at the church. Did I you tie Coke clear. cans to the car? We, huh? Did you tie Coke cans to the car? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was that. I mean, it was small time everything, and we took off for Yuma, Arizona, at four o'clock in the afternoon in an unair conditioned 1960 Corvair that ended up burning 45 quarts of oil to San Diego. It's a long story. <laughs> but the smartest thing I did is I pulled off the road. I just put my hand on my wife's thigh. And I just prayed. I just said, God, why don't you bless our marriage? I was dumb as mud. I didn't know how weird she really was until after I lived with her for a while. In fact, in my naivete, so to speak, early in my marriage, I remember taking a shower and I remember thinking, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give a little dance for my bride. So I come out of the shower. And she says, you're getting the floor wet. And I do my little dance. And I'll never forget what she said to me. She. She looked at me. This is funny even to say. She said, Lamy, um, that is not a good look. <laughs> and I realized that I am so visually driven as a man, okay? Mm -hmm. Visually, just a little snippet of her can get me ready for whatever's coming my way, yeah. okay? But for her, I mean, Less is more. <laughs> well, she, she, she's a crockpot. I mean, women are like crockpots. Men are like microwaves. The men fire up pretty easy. Women, Take they need all these. Yeah. They have hills and valleys and levels to get through, and yeah. sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. I mean, I know my wife, and my, my message to men is know your wife. And my wife loves, this is embarrassing to say, my wife loves being in a king-size bed in a hotel Without me, because <laughs> I mean, it's true. You're bothering her. <laughs> she she likes being alone sometimes, and uh -huh. so you do those things. And and I'm telling you, she purrs like a kitten. I know yeah. she's saying to us, "I am so blessed to be married to that chubby little psychologist <laughs> because he loves me, and he makes me feel what like I'm in good hands." Yeah. And so making love to a woman isn't what you think it is, gentlemen. It's all those little things you do every day that makes a huge difference. And that's why when I get a couple to read sheet music, uh, I ask them to either buy two copies or use two different colored highlighters and highlight that sucker and then trade books. Wow. Because I don't think most of us really understand how each other view each other in this sensitive area called sex, which a lot of us avoid. But it's the reason why we're all here. Yeah, <laughs> if, we don't, if we don't address it, so. Well, there's a lot of little things to discuss and there's one major thing when we come back. Ladies, I know many of you are watching this program, but you need to wake your husband up and tell him that he don't wanna miss what's coming next. We'll be right back with The Difference. So much more still to come on The Difference. Your husband, ladies, is he is he capable of saying something that's just absolutely butt stupid? Next time he says something dumb, rather than jump all over his case and correct him, which the perfectionist likes to do, just look at him and go, wow, fascinating. Why are you looking at me? I didn't say Why anything. Why look for trouble? <laughs> America is in the greatest moral and spiritual crisis in the history of our nation. It's time for the church to stand up for the truth of God's word and take America back. This month for your gift of any amount, you will receive the Proclaim Liberty message and a very special Shield of Strength dog tag. 
For your gift of $200 or more this month, we will also include our book, Born to be Blessed, America's Answers Sermon Series, and a beautiful wooden American flag handcrafted by U.S. veterans. If you aren't using the most powerful tool in your tool belt, 2022 is the year to start. God is waiting to hear from you. America needs your prayers. Our children's future is worth it. Send your gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash liberty. You guys all right? Yeah, I'm okay. I'll be fine. This is really bad. Dude, he dropped it. You know, th th this reminds us as we are so often, you know, get the opportunity to experience it seldom goes as perfect as you planned. That's right, you know, imperfections. And one of the challenges that, that happens in the imperfections of life is, is I think we predispose ourselves to criticism. Oh. You, know, you, you actually have a, a, a conversation that you have about a critical eye. What, what does that have to do with relationships? Wow. If you want to put the kibosh on a relationship, whether it be a parent-child or a husband-wife situation, is develop that critical eye. Now, I say develop, you were sort of born with it because how your mom and dad treated you, and if you suffer from that perfectionism, then chances are you have a critical eye. You can spot a flaw at 40 paces, as I like to say. Well, I point out what makes you a good, whatever that profession is, where perfectionism is paid off, engineering, accounting, astronomy. Brain surgery. Yeah, you know, surgeons, yeah. nurses, you know. Those things, the same skill that makes you so good at what you do is the same skill that works against you. So when you give a negative thought to your son or your daughter, you spawn what I call a defeated perfectionist a person who grows up in piles. Show me a person who had a critical-eyed parent and I'll show you a person who has piles on their desk at work, hmm. piles at home, okay? But here's the irony. If the boss comes in and says, where's that report on X, Y, Z? They'll know exactly which pile to look in. There's order within the disorder. So Lehman, what's this stacks of piles all about? It's sort of a defense mechanism. It's a way of helping you say to yourself, I don't have to be perfect. I'm going to build in some, some slob-like behavior, for lack of a better term. It's a safety valve, so to speak. But that little rudder in the tongue, the Bible talks about that little rudder. That is set on fire of hell. Oh, man, it can turn things. And so learn to be an encourager. Um, I'm one of those people that speak encouragement as much as I can. I, I call it vitamin E. And there's little pocket phrases you can use that just make a difference. Uh, your husband, ladies, is he, is he capable of saying something that's just absolutely <laughs> butt stupid? I mean, just <laughs> dumb as mud. Is he? I'm here to tell you, amen, preach it, brother. My man is capable of saying really dumb things. Next time he says something dumb, rather than jump all over his case and correct him, which the perfectionist likes to do, just look at him and go, wow, fascinating. <laughs> fascinating. Now, ladies, I'm going to give you this. You're going to like this. You can be thinking, you're an idiot, okay? <laughs> you can think it. Just don't say it. Just practice this. Wow. Fascinating. Fascinating. And why are you looking at me? I didn't say why anything. look for trouble? <laughs> you know, we all do that. It's just like my advice to the the parents who, you know, have kids who roll their eyes or slam doors is hit them with something different. Honey, I don't understand that. You don't like living in this thoroughly air conditioned four thousand five hundred square foot home? Uh, is that your problem? I mean, they're kids. They're going to say stupid, dumb things. But there's a time for correction. There's a time when they've been disrespectful. You'll come back, they'll ask you for something. You give them vitamin N, which is no. 
I'm not going to do it. And they're going to say, hey, what gives? You always let me do this. You always let me do that. Yeah, but you know what? I do. I, I'm with you. But you know what? I didn't like the way you talked to me 20 minutes ago. So you bring them back to center. center. Mm-hmm. And in marriage, you do the same thing. When you've misspoke, which you will do, yes. you have to man up and say, honey, you know, uh, what I said to you this morning at breakfast, I've had some time to think about it. I had no business saying that. That was disrespectful in spades. Would you forgive me? And it's over. So a word to women, though, who have sons. Now, how many sons do you have? Two. Okay. You represent, this is so cool, all of manhood, all of womanhood to these young men. So you don't take any guff from them, some mouth from them ever. Why? Because you want them to truly respect woman, mama bear. Mm-hmm. Dad's responsibility is he's going to hear some things once in a while that maybe comes out of somebody's mouth that is inappropriate. And he's going to step in and say, hey, you don't talk to my wife like that or your mom like that. And it's, so it's a coming together of both parents. But I like to emphasize daddy, daughter, mother, mom, son. son. Those are such key relationships because a daughter can just wrap daddy around the finger lots of times. Oh, man. What that daughter needs is a firmness. She needs a dose of masculinity in her life. Your son needs a dose of femininity in his life for him to be that well-rounded person. And and to know how to respond appropriately to it. Yeah, and and don't sell yourself short because you make a difference in your daughter's life. Absolutely. You know, here's a conversation. Uh, Honey, uh, I see there the daughter, she's now 12 or 13. I see the daughter there is beginning to, uh, you know, sort of, uh, grow, uh, fill up there on top. Uh, maybe you ought to have a little talk with her. Well, I wrote a book once called A Chicken's Guide to Talking Turkey to Your Kids About Sex. <laughs> and I point out... Chicken's Guide to Talking Turkey. Turkey to Your Kids About Sex. And I point out that, by the way, that so is which the... which poultry one? That is the least best-selling book. Because parents don't want to talk to their kids about No. Sex. What parent woke up this morning and said, you know what oh, I'd like I'm to do today? To. I'd like to talk to my kid about sex. By the way, if you're brave enough to talk to your, body, your, your kid about sex, the best place to do that is on the interstate. Going 80. In the car. Yeah. So they can't <laughs> jump out of the car. You know, this is God's plan for men and women. And this gift has been misused in our society and perverted in every possible it's been twisted. way to mankind. So... Mm -hmm. You have a limited window to impart those, I call them commercial announcements. You slip kids commercial announcements, little things you want them to hear about life. And you do that as carefully and tactfully as you can. Is it easy? No, but it is simple. There's a simple plan. Do it. Well, we're going to talk more about that simple plan when we come back. You're watching The Difference with Kevin Lee. You don't want to miss what's next. You're watching The Difference. Ladies say, if I didn't ask my husband things, I'd never hear a word. Wrong. Go to your husband and say, honey, can I ask your opinion about something? You'll talk your ear off. Every man here has an opinion. I'm not saying it's the right opinion. I'm just telling you he's got an opinion. Here at Hagee Ministries, we're excited to announce our digital web platforms that provide you with live streaming services, special messages, and series, all through our video on-demand applications. Our Hagee Ministries channel app is now available on Apple TV, Amazon, and Roku streaming platforms. You can also watch our services live on your favorite social media channels, including YouTube, Facebook, or online at jhm.org watch. So with regards to the two of us, it's understand well, for her understanding that I don't want to talk a whole lot. For me, just understanding that men are different, even boys. <laughs> <laughs> for me to be open to, to, to her desire to communicate more. She loves to hear how my day went, so I, I do need to take that extra step. And- but he does have a lot on his mind, and it's asking those kind of questions. Tell me more about that, and you know, asking his thoughts. And- <laughs> And by the way, speaking of talking, this is for you ladies, okay? Now, I don't offend you, but your husband hates your questions. (laughs) There's not a man here that likes his wife's questions, and we hate the Y word. 
Well, guess what? Kids are the same way. So when a kid comes home from school, how is your day today, honey? Fine. What'd you do in school today? Nothing. We could say it in unison. Don't do that. Some ladies say, if I didn't ask my husband things, I'd never hear a word. Wrong. Go to your husband and say, honey, can I ask your opinion about something? He'll talk your ear off. Every man here has an opinion. I'm not saying it's the right opinion. I'm just telling you he's got an opinion. But there's different ways to skin the cat. Even tell me more about that. Even though that's a command, doesn't put the defenses up on a kid. So if a kid says something and you've got an interest, say, honey, you know, tell me more about that. Put away the why word is what I'm saying. It puts people on a defensive. It, it, us men, here's a question. How many men here would like to go to counseling this week? I think some of us are headed there, but that's just because yeah. we, we have no choice. There's no man in the right mind that says, I want to go to counseling this week. But women? Oh, counseling? Oh, sure. I get my hair done, get a pair of shoes, we'll go. I love counseling. So women love, women, you have to understand as a woman, you love relationships. You love, that's why I say you hug anything that moves. That book, Sheet Music, that little sex book I wrote, that's the best book I'll ever write. It'll take you to a point, yeah, that one. I'm trying to get my wife to read that, Kendall. And she, she's a Baptist. She grew up Baptist. She said, I'm not reading that smut. I said, honey, you're the star on several pages. I'd check it out. <laughs> the whole notion of social equality. And we're struggling as a country right now with this social equality. We are social equals. But check this out. We are not the same. Men and women are not the same. I wrote a book, the, sh the sheet music, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a dynamite book. But the cancel culture would say, there's no difference in men and women. I got news for you. You show men and women the same stimuli in different parts of their brain lights up. We're night and day different. You women use three and a half times the number of words that we men use in a given day. I'm just telling you that's the truth. I mean, it's a, that's a scientific study. Welcome back to The Difference. We're discussing marriage, intimacy, and relationship with Dr. Kevin Lehman. So sheet music. Oftentimes people uh, feel like my song is already ruined. H how do you rewrite a, a bad score? Well, that's a tough question because it goes back to experiences in our life, even experiences that we've been forgiven for, okay? It's hard for us to get through our mortal brains that that's been forgiven. Well, and, and that's why the Bible talks about sexual sin is, is bad. It's a, yeah. it's a sin against your own body, but it's... Well, it, the Bible in the New Testament, it actually tells men flee. Oh yeah, you flee know, from it. It says yeah. run from yeah, it. Yeah, run you know? from and, it. And, and it doesn't For say reason. walk away. It doesn't yeah. say go confess to your friend. It yeah. says it, this is like a poisonous viper on the path of life. You see it, run, because it, it, it has such a poison and damage to it. And, and I think it's interesting when you say, you know, from life, because obviously there's infidelity and there's, there's trust issues and challenges that can be introduced into a marriage. But whenever you consider the experiences of your life, I think for a lot of people, there's what kind of home did you grow up in? Did you watch mom and dad hold hands? Did you watch mom and dad sit together? Yeah. Did, you know, was, was this type of an expression a common thing? Or, you know, how yeah. did you relate to the dynamic of what this should look like? Because so much of that is molded from your childhood and then carried into your marriage. Our kids, as old as we are and as old as they are, will say, oh, you guys are so cute because I'll pat her on her behind or I'll hold her hand or uh, some little expression, you know, walk by her and, you know, it's, it's what life's all about. And it's a reminder for all of us that we're always teaching. It's not a talk you have with your son or your daughter about life. It's a series of behaviors and actions that's built upon mutual respect and true love. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got up at 
let's see, I was out the door about five o'clock in the morning, but sure enough, even though I kissed her goodbye and said good night, knowing that I was coming over here, there's a little strip of paper. Hey, sweetheart, do a great job. I know you well. I love you. Aww. You know, fly safe. Uh, it never gets old. It never gets old to know this person that you've grown old with. I mean, look at me, I'm old, but 53 years in a row. Uh, I know people have been married 30 years in a row. 10 to that one, 10 to that one, and 8 to that one. You know, that's 28. <laughs> Where's the other two, Lehman? But anyway, my point is that it is a lifelong commitment, and the people who grow up under this couple that are really a couple, they've really got this togetherness, this emotional oneness, Everybody in that family receives a blessing from that union. They lived in that environment. Absolutely. Now, when they go out, and this is what happens to divorced people, they, they make the wrong decision. This guy turns out to be a real loser, or this woman, to put it bluntly, and uh, they remarry two years later, and they tell themselves they got the same, uh, they got a new Chevy. No, they got the same Chevy with a different paint job. That Dr. Lehman is a conversation starter in so many ways. And sometimes he's the finisher. He can, he can bring in a strong close. But for the most part, what you will receive is godly wisdom, personal humor, and an opportunity Amen. to apply truth to your life. So Dr. Lehman, thank, thank you for you. joining us today. Hey, I enjoy you guys so much. You guys are so good. I, well, I was telling you before, you know, I always challenge people, don't you want to be a difference maker in life? Well, one of the ways you could be a difference maker is, hey, watch the difference with these. I think this ought to be called a cute couple show, but <laughs> that's my input. Well, one of the ways you can make a difference is find out more about an organization that we care deeply about, the Sanctuary of Hope. You can find out more by going to the sanctuaryofhopecares.org. The life of a child is precious in God's eyes, and the gift of life is something you can become a part of today. We at Hagee Ministries are offering you the opportunity to change the life of a child and mother by becoming a legacy partner. As a legacy partner, your monthly gift supports the Sanctuary of Hope that is a one-of-a-kind safe haven that provides a home to single expectant mothers and offers resources that will enable them to find success in their communities. The Sanctuary of Hope exists to provide a loving, safe environment where both baby and mother can receive the education, care, and hope they so desperately need. When you partner with us, our legacy becomes your legacy, and together we are impacting lives and transforming nations for Jesus Christ. There has never been a better time to share the love of Christ with a mother and a child than right now. Become a legacy partner today. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org partner. Kendall and I want to thank Dr. Kevin Lehman for coming by, sharing his insights and his wisdom. I want you to grow closer with your spouse and to create a marriage that makes a difference in this next generation. God bless you and thank you for watching today's program.